There are some rapid recent developments in staging the monumental heavyweight unification bout between Tyson Fury and Alexander Usyk. Knocking you out, Usyk. He ain't messing with these bums now. You're messing with the Gypsy King sausage. As we've covered extensively, that mega fight is expected to crown the first undisputed heavyweight king in over two decades. But some major hurdles recently threatened to derail the event altogether. Originally slated for a February 17th showdown in Saudi Arabia, Fury suddenly withdrew from the fight last week citing a bad eye cut suffered in training that required medical attention. After tensions flared over possible fight cancellation, new terms got hashed out this week to reschedule the undisputed title tilt for May 18th, still in Riyadh. Fury took to social media appearing in great spirits now that a new date secured this legacy-defining showdown, but his positive reaction also raised some suspicion. Rather than clear frustration over delays to the biggest fight of his career, Tyson almost gloated about the fight extension. That perceived excitement fueled speculation about whether something else motivated needing a later date. Some insiders claim that Fury is actually scared of facing Usyk, who is desperate to prove himself in this fight, while others believe that Fury actually struggled mightily in training and wasn't close to being in proper shape to defeat Usyk next month, needing more time before taking such an enormous risk. So chatter floats around the fight community that Team Fury found a convenient injury excuse, allowing them to push back the event until better prepared both physically and mentally. No matter the actual truth behind the scenes, Fury's public gloating definitely poured gasoline on that speculation fire. Fans read odd enthusiasm about a three-month fight delay due to bizarre timing and circumstances. Now before going further, I want to make clear no concrete evidence exists proving Fury and his team manufactured injury issues or misled officials in scheduling this fight. However, you can understand why various comments and questionable details around the postponement process raised intrigue and suspicion among the boxing public. Too many puzzle pieces looking conspicuously connected. First, the badly cut eye and infection pop up seemingly out of nowhere midway through a routine sparring session. Team Fury leverages that into immediate fight cancellation talks just over a week out from the Saudi event. But after Saudi overseer His Excellency Turkey Al Al Sheikh essentially calls their bluff threatening massive breach of contract penalties, suddenly the injury proves manageable fighting two months later. If the medical concerns were ever legitimate, how does an extra month of healing now make that exact same wound safe for world-class boxing? The logic seems questionable. Further stoking rumors, we learned Alal Sheikh supposedly implemented an unprecedented $10 million minimum fine for whichever fighter withdraws. This means Fury risks huge money walking away again without elaborate, irrefutable proof. That astronomical penalty gives obvious incentives to avoid withdrawal unless physically unable to compete. Otherwise, Fury flushes tens of millions down the drain, pulling out twice. Yet rather than seem angry over fight uncertainty or financial duress, Fury adopts an alarmingly positive tone about the whole ordeal, almost too satisfied with the final terms. As he gushed on social media, I got a new fight date, it was very, very quickly, I suppose. It's upsetting to a lot of people, but refreshing to a lot of good people. Again, not the reaction you'd expect from someone despondent over fight cancellation and career disruption just days earlier. Those upbeat sentiments signaled red flags. Something odd was afoot. Here's what he said in his video while showing his injuries. Hey guys, get up! We um, got a new fight date. Very, very quickly, I suppose that was. Upsetting to a lot of people, but refreshing to a lot of good people. Um, massive shout out to Turkey Al Sheikh, who made this uh, new date possible so quick. Um, massive thank you. Massive respect. Shout out to the Riyadh season. Shout out to Saudi Arabia. Shout out everybody. I'm in such a good mood. There's... Um, in life, sometimes shitty things happen, but you never let it get to you. You always keep moving forward. Look at that bastard right there. Woo! Nice little elbow right in the eye. Nearly cost me the biggest fight in my career. But what can you do? Shit happens and we move on. We keep moving forward. And now we have a new date. Usex crying his eyes out. 
<sighs> Tyson should retire. Oh, he wants to retire. Oh, no retirement here, motherfucker. You get knocked out. Knock Spark out. May 18th. The new date. Live and exclusive from Saudi Arabia, Riyadh season. I just thought I'd let you all know what time it was. Have a fantastic weekend, guys. And I look forward to the fucking fights tonight. Come on! And I'll see all you dossers on May the 18th. Good luck. God bless. What was, um... But move on to what? Potentially a career-high payday in a legacy fight now delayed solely over that specific injury's recovery timeline? Not adding up. And capping the bizarre positivity surrounding revised plans, Fury warns Usyk, better not relax expecting retirement because he's getting violently finished come May 18th now. So in summary, Team Fury cries urgently about an injury so severe it cancelling a legacy fight makes sense, only to then happily accept terms moving said fight months later when financial penalties got leveraged. And now, supposedly still healing infected wound no barrier to intense training, got it. Again, no hard proof reveals some grand underlying scheme from Fury's camp. Perhaps everything played out innocently, and Tyson simply handles frustration better than most. But you can't blame boxing fans and pundits for finding that series of events awfully suspicious. Too many financial and reputation incentives existed for Fury to stall here if unprepared. The cynical perspective argues Team Fury realized quickly they still weren't peaking or ready for Usyk's slick style. So they orchestrated medical interference, allowing more training, strategy tweaks, and precious time getting into supreme shape. Even Fury's overt gloating and confidence about destroying Usyk in May hints things unfolding ideally now behind the scenes compared to earlier uncertainty. Of course, if any concrete evidence eventually emerges of deception from Fury's camp, expect chaos. But short of that happening, only skeptics clinging to conspiracy theories. Still, too many uncanny factors in the postponement process put the boxing world on high alert and Fury's lavish public reaction praising revised plans convinced more critics something smells rotten in the state of Saudi Arabia. We will keep monitoring for further unusual developments in staging this monumental heavyweight title showdown. Perhaps clearer injury timelines or added context explain the peculiar circumstances at play lately. For now, sharpen your conspiracy theory hats tracking this Fury vs. Usyk undisputed bout as questionable health issues give way to supreme confidence. Where there's smoke, there's often fire with mega-fight boxing politics. Let me know your reaction to these fight week developments and whether you spot any red flags suggesting something isn't totally transparent with Team Fury. Till then, like this video if you absolutely love our work and don't forget to subscribe to our channel for more updates.